Hey there, welcome to the Treasure Wellness Show. Grab your mug of herbal tea, a notebook, and your Bible, and we will dive right in. I'm so glad you're here. I am so happy to bring you today's guest. Lissa Figgins is a time management coach and host of the Redeem Her Time podcast. This is going to be such a great conversation that we are going to be having today. Um, how are you doing today, Lissa? Oh my goodness, doing really, really well, enjoying what's left of uh, this season and getting ready for the next one. Right. Absolutely. Yes. We're always moving and shaking, aren't we? We are. Well, I am so happy to chat with you today, Lissa, because you love to not only help women with balancing their time and their management of their time and what is really going on in their day, like how much time is being wasted. Hello. Um, how much time is being wasted in our day and helping women to prioritize what they could do to make the best use of their time. Really planning is a huge part of that. Um, but what I love the most is that you have this with God way about it as you are coaching and educating your women that are that you were helping. So um, I just love that so much. And I know a lot of my listeners, like myself, like I used to really struggle with making time to take better care of myself, making myself a priority, making my health a priority. Um, and, you know, even now, sometimes I fall into that trap of that mindset trap. I don't have time to rest which you and I have talked about before. And we know it's a lie from the enemy because Jesus calls us to rest. He modeled rest. So I know for me, I speak about physical, emotional, and spiritual rest, what happens when we don't make the time to take care of ourselves. But I would really, really love to hear your viewpoint on it. What happens when we don't make time for our wellness? And what does that have to do with our walk with God? as you have this with God life? Yeah, what a great question. Well, first, let me just share a little bit of my story because I'm a walking example of what happens when we fall into this busyness, right? It just seems, it's so interesting. When I have conversations with women, I specifically love connecting with women who are Christians and have faith as you know real central value for them, but it doesn't matter if it's someone who does have that, that piece in their life or doesn't. When I ask women, how is life lately? You know what answer they give most often? Busy. busy. Yes, or some form of busy. Busy, 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 always busy, always something, right? And it just seems like it doesn't matter what season it is. And I think we keep excusing it and saying, oh, it's just this busy season. And then after this is done, or when right. summer's over, or when my kids leave the nest, or when, you know, fill in the blank, all of a sudden I'm not going to feel busy. And I've the more I've dug into my own heart and the more conversations I've had with other women, I've realized busy is not just a disordered calendar or to-do list. It's a disordered heart, Ooh. right? It really starts down here. And what's, what's from the inside, what's from the heart, what's from the core, those values are what drive where our time and attention goes in our day. And when this is out of order, then everything out here is going to be out of order, right? Yeah. Now, like I said, I was a prime example, like at one point in my life, and I can't say I never fall into this, but um, but at one point in my life, I was too busy. Like I was saying yes to all the things, but yet I was dropping a lot of balls. I was showing up on the outside, but I wasn't really fully present. And a couple of years ago, I noticed that I had this like ball in my throat, like all the time. And I remember thinking like, well, that's weird. Like, I mean, at this point, I'm like nearly 50, just turned 50 a couple of weeks ago. I certainly know how to chew and swallow. I don't think that something's changed. Right. But it was like always there. And it was, it was the type of thing, like it was there for so long. I kind of started forgetting about it. And so when my college girlfriends, we got together for our annual weekend and I told them it had been over a year and they were like, girl, will you go get that checked out? So I promised to do that. I did the doctor checked all kinds of different things, scoped it. And he, he sat me down. He's like, there is nothing wrong with your, what's going on in your throat. He goes, what you have is hystericus globus. And he like had this smirk on his face. And he's like, you know what hystericus means? He's like, it means crazy. He's like, you are crazy. Meaning like, you're just, it's like, there's so much going on in your head and your heart that you, your body is sensing it in this like ball in your throat. 
And that's when it like hit me like, oh my goodness, I'm not just crazy. Like, you know, I don't know what I'm thinking about, but like, I'm crazy busy. Cause I thought that I was doing everything well and doing it with God and all of that. But yet, yeah, I was never taking the time to rest, to really like identify what mattered most and how, like what I'm saying yes to and what I'm not and where my time and attention was going. And so it was affecting everything, every area of my life. I talk about eight areas in our with God life. We have our faith walk, right? Our relationship with God. We have our relationships, which are either going to be with family, like our marriage or parenting, our aging parents, you know, extended family. And then we have friendships. We've got our work or service, whatever we do to, you know, add value to the world, whether it's paid or unpaid our wellness, of course, right. Our finances, um, and then our own personal passions and our dwelling. And so what I noticed was this crazy busy state was affecting every single one of those areas. And I was not being fully present. And then I was frustrated that I wasn't being fully present. And it was just this like ongoing cycle of, you know, me just trying to do more. And yet, you know how that goes. And sometimes we try to do more and more and more. That isn't the answer either. And so it was, you know, a little bit after that, that I was just thinking about like, okay, how do I slow down? (laughs) If I really do have hystericus globus, okay. Um, I can laugh now. Right. But like, okay, what is, what's the fix? Because obviously it's, you know, it's something that's going on in my heart. And that's when really God started saying, okay, now lean in and listen to me. Like, let, let me show you where to put your time and attention. Let me help you guide where that goes. And he brought me across that passage in Ephesians five that says, be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming the time because these are difficult days, right? And I started realizing instead of always feeling like I never had enough time, like, okay, like I, maybe I'm, it's, it's, I'm looking at the wrong way, you know, instead of focusing on what I don't have, okay, God's given me this gift of time. How can I use it? purposely, wisely, like he said, being careful with it and investing it in the things that are building his kingdom. And so really that's kind of what's come to where I'm helping women now is like discovering we really do have the time we need for what he's called us to, but we need to pause and lean into what he's saying and not just what the world around us is saying. Oh my gosh, that is golden, golden. I love that so, so much. That is a with God life, right? And, you know, for my verse that I hang on to, which I love, I love that verse, um, in Matthew 6, 33, you know, seek God first, seek first mm-hmm. the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Everything else can, is going to work out. Everything else, you know, if you're seeking him first, it will fall into line the way it should be if you are with God, right? So, oh, wow. Grab a sticky note and post that on your mirror as a beautiful reminder each day. Lean in and listen. And then Ephesians 5. Um, yeah, that's a beautiful reminder. So I know some people are thinking, about their personal schedules, their personal, um, maybe uh, time bandwidth, right? Uh, Especially if life is super, super crazy busy, right? Like like you were (laughs) talking about for yourself. But in terms of wellness, because, you know, that's what a lot of, um, a lot of women in empty nest, women over 40, they are really getting concerned about their health and their wellness because they've been putting it on the back burner for so long, right? So if we have a crazy busy life, how do we make time for our wellness? How do we prioritize that, Lissa? Yeah, well, I think it always starts with that awareness, you know, and 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 that awareness can start right now. And I think you're, you, you're so right. Like we've put ourselves on the back burner, especially our wellness, especially as we've been raising kids and going through just those seasons of life. And here's what happens when we don't make time for our wellness or for any of those eight areas of our life, it eventually will demand our time, right? So like for in the wellness category, if I'm not making well a time for my wellness in my twenties and my thirties and my forties, right? When I'm hitting my fifties, oh my goodness, I am seeing and feeling the effects. And here's what I've learned and tell me, cause you're the health expert, right? It always will cost you more at later than it would if you would have been, you know, giving the time and attention before. It's going to cost you more time, more money, more energy, more emotion, more stress, more, you know. Always, right? always so much more. I would rather pay now than pay later. 
too, totally. you know, like people say, well, it's so expensive to eat healthy. The junk food is so much cheaper. Yeah. But that comes with a cost. It comes with a cost later and yeah. in medications and doctor visits and your energy and your time and all of that you just said, absolutely. And, you know, we either pay now or pay later. And yeah. I've got women that want to be active with their grandkids. You know, they want to be able to get on the floor and play Legos and, mm -hmm. you know, Barbies or whatever with their grandkids go for walks. They do not want to be um, more sedentary when mm -hmm. they are at that beautiful phase of their lives, you know? So yeah. Which is why we have to steward the, this body that God's given us, just like our time, just like our money. We have to steward our body well, so that, like you said, we can have what we need to pour out the way that we are truly called to in this next season. And I think what happens is we really have a choice always, right? We can either choose to live by design. So I'm going to be intentional with what choices I'm making, or we by default are choosing to live by default. So if I'm not intentionally choosing, I'm actually choosing the opposite, right? Which means I'm just reacting to what comes. Oh, that you know, ice cream sounds great. Oh, that fast food line sounds great. Oh, that drink, you know, at night sounds great. Or, oh, that Netflix is sounds better than my walk or, you know, whatever. But then those effects don't, you know, don't come out right away. It's not till later. So, you know, so I think that's the, the first place is really understanding, like, why does this even matter? Because if we're not caring for our temple, it's going to be really hard, like you said, to be down the floor with our grandkids, to be serving our community, to be, going on, you know, the missions trips or, or whatever, what, whoever it is God's called us to serve. It's really hard for us to do that. So I think the first step is really knowing the why and deciding that your wellness matters. And when, when I work with women inside my program, we don't, like I said, go into their calendar first, we go into their heart first, and we create a with God life vision in all eight areas of our life. And when you do that, now it gives reason to even those seemingly little mundane things like having breakfast or, you know, taking that being active or things like that, because we see how this is a stepping point for this bigger vision, you know, that God's, that God's given us. So I think that first step is deciding is the why, right? Deciding that it does matter and you're done putting it on the back burner. And then I think the second step is the what, like prioritizing what matters. And I love the book, The One Thing by Gary Keller, as in like Keller Williams Realty. And he gives this really simple question. So if you haven't read the book, I'm going to summarize the whole book in one sentence. You still can read the book if you want, but really this is all you need. Okay, ready? So here's his question. Oh. What's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else would be easier or unnecessary, or I like to add or better or whatever fill in the blank word you want. Right. So if you think about it in your wellness, right, what's the one thing I can do in my wellness, like right now, not the shoulda, woulda, couldas from back in my twenties and thirties, because those are already done. Right. So right now, what can I do in this area and for any areas, right? such that by doing it, everything else would be blank, right? Like fill in the blank with what it is that you want to do and, and identify what that is instead of just, I want to get healthy right? Yeah. Which we know that super generic goal does not get us anywhere, which is why most people who set that goal January 1st have not made it beyond the 17th of January. It's when statistically most people drop That's off, it. right? And so, yeah, when you identify what's one thing I can do, not what are the 20 things I could do, right? What's the one thing? And then just get consistent at doing that one thing over time, you will see results because you're putting that, you know, over time, that, that intention in that area. And you can always layer more things on. I think sometimes we overcomplicate it and I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to, you know, get up at this time and I'm going to this concoction and I'm going to, you know, hand make it, you know, home make everything. And, and then we, we get overwhelmed and we do nothing. Right. Right. And so I've got, I've got two different things that like, you know, can fit in the wellness area in a lot of areas. One of them is called the two minute rule. Like when you want to create a new habit, specifically, we're talking about your wellness right here, right? Just commit to doing it for two minutes, right? Like if you want to do sit-ups, do sit-ups for two minutes, right? It's better than doing none, <laughs> right? Yes. It's easy to do. And yeah. everybody can find two minutes. I don't care how busy you are. You can find two minutes. And so you don't have an excuse not to do it. I have a friend who committed to walking. Now her, she did six minutes. She committed to walking six minutes a day because she felt like that was a no excuse time for her. Like she could make that happen regardless of where she was. Last time I asked her, she was over 1500 days in a row 
that she because it was so little. It was so easy. It didn't matter if it was winter, if she was in Colorado. It didn't matter if she was on vacation in Europe with her family. It didn't matter when she had COVID. Like she just was like, I can do six minutes. You know, it didn't matter if it was 10 o'clock at night when she remembered but because she made it really small, right? And she didn't give herself like an easy out of, oh, I don't have time for that, so I'm gonna wait. Um, you know, so what could you do even for two minutes? And what difference would that make? And then let the two minutes turn into six, turn into 10, you know, it will grow. The other one, the other little tip that I love sharing is what I call the two day rule. Just don't let it be two days in a row if you don't do something, right? Because life happens. Yes, you do get sick. Yes, you don't feel like it. Yes, you overslept. Yes, you know, your husband needed something, whatever, right? Like, okay, but don't let it be a pattern because once you do it three days in a row, now it's become a pattern. So if it happens one day, okay, so what? I go back tomorrow. My rule is the two day rule. I don't let it be two days in a row. And as long as you haven't established that pattern, it's so much easier to change it, right? And to go back there. So keeping that what really simple is really important. And then just like with a goal, you have to, you can't be general. You have to be specific. The third step is the when. So we've had the why, the what, now the when, like, when do, am I going to make time for this? Yeah. If it matters, you will find the time, right? And we can always look at two places to see what you truly value your bank account and your calendar. So true. Right? Yeah. You will so make time. And it will be evidence of where you're investing. Yeah. And so when you can get specific about this is the day of the week or the time of the day, and make it like an appointment, right? If you have an appointment with your doctor, you don't just like, uh, you know, you show up or what do you do? If something comes up and you absolutely can't make it, you reschedule it. You just move that block somewhere else. You don't like go, oh, I'm just gonna put it on the back burner. Hopefully you don't, right? Um, and so we can get really specific about the when. I think that makes a difference. So the why, the what, and the when are what's gonna help us start really putting some attention and intention into it. I love that so much because, um, and I love your two minute rule. And your two day rule as well, because yeah, I'm all about let's simplify the steps that we want to take to get to the goal that we make. Right. And you're right. We have to make an intentional goal. I talk about intentionality a lot, um, but I also talk about mindset and mm -hmm. what you're talking about is changing your mindset around our intentions, essentially. So, and that's exactly what, what I talk about in my coaching and in my, my programs as well, because we are human. <laughs> So we're right. going to start off all strong, really, really strong with our goals, no matter what they are. I mean, it could be anything, but life gets so distracting. So before long, we fall off the wagon or we give up, we beat ourselves up, we shame ourselves. That's a whole other conversation. But a lot of times we'll just say, well, like Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind, you know, tomorrow is another day. Right. And then it just turns into another day and another day. And before you know it, we have completely gotten off of the two minute rule, the two day rule. So I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, how do we consistently though, follow through with our with God intentions, no matter what they may be? Yeah. Well, first I think we have to really be aware, like we talked about before. And I just want to say this before I have some other thoughts, this uh, device that follows us around 24 seven is really distracting. So if you ever say you don't have the time for something, whether it's your wellness, a relationship, time with the Lord, you know, to invest in, you know, in enjoying how much you're using this, because chances are the, if you're average, the average person spends four hours a day on this device. The average person touches their phone 2,617 times a day, right? Like there's some time to redeem. It right? doesn't mean we have to throw this out the window because I do think that, you know, th there are purposes and uses that allow us to love God more and love others more with our phone. There are great apps. I use apps to work out every day. I use ways to track, you know, my eating on my phone. So it can be a really great tool, but I think we have to really be aware of what, how am I using this and how much am I using it and not just make, I don't have time be the excuse for why we're not, you know, doing that. So I think that's, that's the first thing. Um, but when you talk about being consistent, I think the big thing is, is that we have to, we have to voice it out loud, right? Because anything that we keep inside, it's really easy if left to ourselves, what do we do? We let ourselves off the hook. We quietly quit. We cut corners or we never even start, you know, right. like no it's accountability. A, it's just a good intention, right? So the first place of course, is being accountable with the Lord, right? Of just like committing it to prayer and saying, God, I want to be a wise steward of this body you've given me, this time you've given me, whatever, this relationship you've given me. 
right? And, and allow him to give purpose to even those seemingly mundane things of every day, right? And putting it out there in that way. Um, I think too, like there statistically, they say that when you write something down, it increases the chances of you doing it by 46%. That's like almost half, right? Like right. writing it down, what's already in my head and my heart, you know, is going to help me with that. Like, yeah. So like you said, maybe it goes on a post-it note, you know, maybe it goes like, you know, somewhere on the, on the kitchen refrigerator or on a desk or something like that. But, you know, putting it out there in front of yourself, I think is going to be key. And then putting it in front of other people. When you share with others, get this, it takes it from 46% up to 76% of you following through because you told someone else. Why? <laughs> because it increases your commitment to it because you've had to voice it, right? Yep. And now people know you're accountable. Like, you know, so if that person asks, hey, hey, Lisa, how's it going with, you know, those daily walks? I don't want to be like, oh, I got a big fat goose egg, you know, like, so that can be something that, you know, kind of keeps this going. And then when you combined you know, the right system and support with things like coaching, you're now you're talking like way in the nineties. Right. So I just think it's really important that we don't just keep it inside because like you said, we get distracted and it becomes a someday, one day tomorrow plan, yeah. but we get it out. We get it out in front of the Lord in front of ourselves. If we can see it. And then in front of other people. And that is how we, and then we start building a consistency muscle, right. And the, like, just like with your pushups, the more consistent you do them, the stronger your arms will get, right? I'm working on not having flabby arms for my son's wedding. I want to make sure that they're nice and, you know, in bulk for pictures and stuff like that, right? So me doing a few push-ups every day and being consistent is going to build that versus me just saying, oh, I don't want to have, you know, mother-in-law arms when we're at the wedding and, you know, coming up. So. Yeah. I think every mom does that. Like, I know I did that. <laughs> like, right. We all do it for sure for a big, big event. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's it's really, really good to, I mean, it keeps us intentional because we have a goal. We have that big goal. So um, yeah, you know, God is a God of order. He is a God of um, intention. And so when we are living our life with God, then it makes it easier for us to also be people of order and intention. That doesn't mean we have to have it all together because Lord knows we will never have it all together <laughs> this side of heaven, but it does mean that we are really thriving because we are with God. We are doing things God's way. We are seeking him first and then letting him order our day, order our steps. And then it's changing our mindset. It's changing our heart posture so that we are then more intentional and we are then more successful. So this has been such a great conversation. I really appreciate you sharing your personal stories, but then also, you know, your tips, your amazing ideas and tips. I hope, I hope you were writing those down, but if not, like all of Lissa's information will be in the show notes. Um, I know we could continue discussing this conversation, this topic, because it's so, so good, but in light of time, would you give our listeners a simple, quick win? Would you give them a treasured truth? Hmm. You know, I think what I needed to hear back in the day, and I still need to sometimes hear is that God has given you an abundance of time for what you are called to, because I think so often we're looking at the lack. I don't have enough time. If I had time, when I have time, if only I had time, right. It's all about, we're looking at that instead of saying, God has given me this life and he has given me this time on earth. And it's more than enough for what he's called me to. A friend of mine recently said this, and I just thought this was great. That ties into it, that when God gives you vision, he gives you the provision, right? Like, and that includes your time and having the time for that thing that mattered, that he gave you that vision, that with God vision for. Um, and I'm reminded of second Corinthians nine, eight that says, and God is able to make all grace abound. I love that word abound to you so that in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Like, do you hear the abundance in all of that, right? There's no lack there of God. I don't have enough grace. I don't have enough things. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough, right? Like God has truly given us as his daughters an abundance of time for what he's called us to. If we will just stop being busy and pause and ask him, Lord, where are you calling me to invest my time? And then trusting him and letting go of those other things that maybe are distracting us from that. Right. And God's time is not our time. And he can 
create more time and space for the things that he's called us to do. So we don't need to be worried or anxious about the clock, the calendar, you know, the fact that we only have 24 hours in a day. <laughs> we all only have 24 hours in a day, but God can multiply our time and our resources and, and just everything. So I love that. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, you've been so helpful. So fun to talk to you about this conversation, this topic. Tell me, how can my listeners get in touch with you, Lissa? Yeah, well, the best place is to go to my website, which is just redeemhertime.com. When you're there, you'll find links to three different free things. One is the podcast. So if you're already a podcast listener here and listen to Michelle, I do too. Um, the Redeem Her Time podcast, we talk about all things about our with God life and how to make time for that. Um, and uh, I also on the website offer a free five minute redeem your time guide. So when you're feeling like that busyness is coming up, maybe you don't have the sensation in your, in your throat like I did, but maybe it's in the pit of your stomach, right? With that anxiety around your time, push pause. This one sheet gets you connected with the Lord, connected with what matters and back, you know, focused on that in less than five minutes. So grab, you can grab that on the website and I do offer a free five minute, find the time coaching call. So if you are really wanting to see some changes with your time and really make it an extension of your faith walk, then I'd love to have a conversation and help you start taking steps towards that. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. That's, this has been so fun, Lisa. Thank oh, you for I coming. I always love hanging with you. Thank you.